So, ultimately, stuff is worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And I want to I talk a little bit about appraised value. Um, we get a lot of people bringing in artwork or sports memorabilia. Um, for some reason, we get a lot of people coming in with artwork that they bought in Beverly Hills, thinking that they're going to come here and sell it to us for twice as much as they bought it in Beverly Hills for. If you bought some artwork in Beverly Hills, you basically paid more than retail for it. You paid beyond retail price for it. You, you paid a past retail because you bought it in an ex the most expensive place you could have probably bought the item for in the whole entire country. And you're trying to get double from us? It's impossible. Our work is, and sports memorabilia, is one of those things that when the economy is great and people have money flowing out of their pockets, they're willing to spend on it. But with the economy being so bad, people will not spend money on artwork. So when you come in with this item appraised at some crazy price, you don't think you're going to get it. For example, this item right here, we had this appraised about $5,000. It's the Steelers Mean Joe Green, the um, steel curtain that's signed by the four members of the st uh, steel curtain. It's got four real Super Bowl tickets. It's beautiful. It was appraised at $5,000. But we're asking $675. And to be honest, no one has even made an offer on it. When the guy came in, we came, we gave him 300 bucks for it because we knew we'd probably get 600 for it. Um, this over here is a Hank Aaron um, jersey. It's a real Michelin Ness um, Atlanta Braves jersey signed by Hank Aaron. It's framed really nice. It was appraised at $4,000. We're asking $700. I think we gave that guy 300 bucks for this too because in the end, we're probably going to get $600 for it. So your appraised value actually means nothing. Um, basically, what you, it's, stuff is worth what you're gonna, um, what someone's willing to pay for it. So when you come to us with your collectibles, like I said, we're gonna use real statistics, real selling prices. So if you want to be a, a smart um, seller to us, go on eBay, see what your stuff is selling for, not the asking price. See what it's selling for. If you're willing to take half of that for all your items, and mind you, you can bring it in one item, or you can bring us in thousand items. We're going to buy every single one of them. We're not going to cherry pick out the three or four best pieces like some of the places out here. We'll buy them all and we'll pay you half of what it's worth, all of it. So if you're willing to take, by doing some research, if you're willing to take half of what it's worth, come to us and we'll give you the money. Uh, also when you come to us, when we make you that offer, we're doing it based on the numbers. So when we do our research and we figure out on paper what your collectibles are worth, and we cut it in half and we offer you a number, that's our offer. This isn't like Pawn Stars where we're going to start at 50 bucks and then through negotiation to make it look good on TV, we're going to start from 50 bucks and end up at 1500 That's not how it works. We're not going to try to lowball you in the beginning and, and hope you're going to haggle us up. You come in with a $40 item, we're going to give you 20 bucks. You ask for $20.50, we're going to tell you to take it and get out of here. Our offer is going to be the highest possible. You come with $1,000 worth of stuff, we're going to offer you $500 right off the bat. If you ask for $520, we're going to say no. We're going to offer you maximum right off the bat, and that's it. You can either take it, or you can go and try to sell it to somebody else. I'll let you know that most of the places out here in Vegas are going to offer you 5 to 10% of what it's worth, not 50 a lot of times people will come in with their collectibles and we have to remind them of what uh, collecting means. Um, we get a lot of people coming in with collectibles and for some reason they have this misconception that all collectibles are some kind of an investment. Like they bought jewels or gold or diamonds or something and it's an investment that it's going to go up in value. Collectibles aren't for increasing in value. Yes, some increase in value. But 95 or more percent of the collectibles go down in value. Collectibles are not an investment. They're something that gives you pleasure or enjoyment when you go to the store, you got them, you can put them in the click case, you can put them on the shelf at home, you can smile and look at them. It's, it means some kind of enjoyment. It's a hobby. It is not an investment. When you buy Star Wars action figures from the store at full price, from the 90s, and put them on the shelf, their enjoyment, their fun, their pleasure, you keep an eye on them, you look at them, you enjoy them. But when you go to sell them a few years later, you're not going to get your money back because they don't go up in value. Here's a real good example. These are, we get these in all the time. These Hummel figurines from West Germany, a lot of them were made during World War II. Um, years ago, 10 years ago for example, 
these figurines um, could have been worth anywhere from three hundred to two, three thousand dollars each for these figurines. They're really pretty. They were hand painted, um, but this is what we consider right now. This, along with china and postage stamps, is an old person's collectible. Older people collected these, and the people who used to collect these and stamps in China are in their 70s and 80s right now, and they're passing it on to their kids and to their grandkids, and their grandkids don't want this stuff. They want cell phones, computer games, you know, high-tech devices. So all these things that are used to be high-value prices are getting dumped on the internet, on eBay, at ridiculous prices. This thing, years ago, would probably be worth $130, this one little tiny figurine. Now you can go online on eBay all day long and get it for five bucks. Why? Because everyone is dumping it on the internet and supply and demand economics. When there's too many of them online, the price plummets. No one's buying them. And I mean, even the ones who are buying them now at five bucks are older people and they're, you know, the price is going to go down. So when you're buying collectibles, hopefully you're buying them and you're having fun. I mean, you wouldn't go out and buy these things and go, God, I hate buying these things. It's an investment. Let me put it in the shelf and hopefully I'll get some money later. Hopefully that's not how you're buying collectibles. You're supposed to get some enjoyment out of them. So you buy them, you put them on the shelf, you smile, you look at them, you remember when you got them, who you got them with, you got some memories with them. And then when it's time to pass them on, you pass them on to somebody else to let someone else have good memories for them. But you're not going to get your money back. They are not an investment. Like the guy I talked about earlier with the Hummel plates, the six Hummel plates, thinking they were an investment, thinking he was going to buy them in, you know, 1975 for 25 bucks and make uh, $10,000 25 years later. It's not a reality. He didn't get any enjoyment from them. He thought that was an investment. He made a big mistake. So collectibles are not for investment purposes. They're for enjoyment. Take them as enjoyment. And when you're done, be aware when you sell them to us, we're not going to pay your enjoyment value. We're going to pay black and white, literal, book value. We can't pay you for sentimental value. We can't pay for enjoyment value. So hopefully when you're ready to sell the collectibles, it means you're basically done. The enjoyment is gone. I'm going to pass them on, and I'll be willing to take what they're basically worth.